Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna share with you version 4.0, the latest update of my displacer tool, which includes snow and moss generation. There's some really cool updates and also some really good quality of life improvements. So let's get right into it. First things first, as always, before you hit up Discord or in the comments section and you are using the tool, make sure you go to your plugins and enable geometry script. Simply search it in there, click on enable. You will need to press yes and restart your engine. With our displacer tool selected here, we're gonna come over to the right side and you're gonna notice we used to use this material slot here for adding a material to our actual displacer. However, we are no longer using this particular material section. We're gonna go ahead and open up our displacer category here and you'll see there's one, two, three, and four. We have our mesh, advanced, displacement, and convert to static mesh. So I'm gonna briefly go over these and then we'll touch base on some of the new options here. So of course, as usual, you can freeze the script so you can move it around freely without affecting or trying to recalculate all the time. This is our static mesh spot. So you're gonna add the static mesh that you wish to actually displace, which we have a sphere selected here. And this is the new material slot. So you're gonna go ahead and add your material that you wanna use in this slot here. You can no longer just add the material and drag and drop it in your viewport on the actual uh, blueprint. So make sure you drag that into this slot here. This is gonna be performing some calculations in the background that have really improved how things work. Uh, next, we have our advanced section. We're not gonna go over that today. So make sure you check out those original videos if you need to see more options on that. And under displacement, we have our displacement texture here. Just make sure that matches your material. And then we're gonna use, you have our actual displacement power. We have our UV tiling and offset and our color channel of the UV. So you can make adjustments there depending on what type of actual UV or um, UV texture map that you're using for displacement and our subdivision amount. So if you wanna increase the quality and higher poly, you can do that also. We're gonna be having re, uh, recompute normals turned on. You can always turn that off if you need to. And down here at the bottom here, you'll see that we have have an option for convert to static mesh. So we used to have to go up into the modeling tools section here and we'd have to find the convert button and convert things over to a static mesh. However, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, not super fun to do. So now we've got a simple button built right into the actual blueprint and that'll do it for us. So let's go ahead and jump back in here and close out of the modeling tools. So what you're gonna need to do is scroll down just a little bit here and you're gonna notice, you're gonna want to collapse all these categories here because what happens is these event functions get put into a default category and it's kind of down the list a little bit, a little inconvenient, but that's just how it goes. So down here in the default category, you'll see that we have a button for converting to a static mesh, but we're not gonna quite click that yet because up here under the convert to static mesh options here, you're gonna see we have asset name or static mesh to update. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in a name here called, I don't know, mud sphere, okay? And so when I click on convert to static mesh now, what's gonna happen is it's gonna do some calculating. It's gonna take our dynamic mesh that's being generated through geometry script, convert it into a static mesh. And you'll notice you saw just a little bit of flickering there. And so I'll show you what has happened. So we have our displacer still selected on our outliner here. And if I click on hide, you'll notice it's still there. Well, that's because in our outliner, it has actually created a static mesh and placed it in the exact same spot as the displacer was. So if I click and hide that, you can see that's what we're viewing now is a actual static mesh, no longer our displacer. But what's cool is it generates that static mesh and it still leaves our displacer, but I can't see it, right? Well, what it does is when you click convert to static mesh is it hides and freezes the actual displacer tool so that's not taking up resources still in the background. So if I scroll back up here and I uncheck free script, you'll see that our actual displacer comes back so I can make adjustments and fine tune stuff if I need to again before we're converting back into a static mesh. So of course we wanna kinda of convert things back into static meshes instead of keeping them as dynamic meshes because performance, right? 
and we want to be able to use Nanite. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is go ahead and hide our displacer again and show our static mesh. I'm going to uh, show you here if we go back to our content drawer and under displacer, we have a new category or new folder called generated meshes and there's a displacer. There will also be a snow and moss one here when you generate static meshes off of that. Click on that and you can see now we have a static mesh of our displacer really really cool and this makes it a lot easier to make adjustments and so forth and one of the other cool options is what we can do now is i could come in here place our static mesh or say paste several of these right i could copy and paste multiple of these maybe i'm using them for building an environment now i can come back to my displacer tool and i can come back in here and me, let me actually move this one, this is our static mesh still, come back to our displacer tool and hide. And then what we're going to do is unfreeze our script, make sure that's all good. So this is our displacer. So I can come in here and let's say I'm going to go crazy. I'm just going to displace this thing like wild. Okay. What we can do now is if I scroll back down, as long as I have the same asset name typed in here, it's going to replace that asset and update all of these. So let's go ahead and do that. Click on convert to static mesh. What that's going to do is picks that same asset name that we typed in in our asset browser and boom. Now it's updated all of our meshes to that crazy displacement, right? And of course, it's hidden our displacer tool back again. So I'm going to come back to our displacer tool and unfreeze the script again. And there's our displacer. I'm going to show you one other way that you can do this. So let's say you don't know the name offhand or you don't have it. So we're going to clear that out and I can come right in here. And I know that one was mud sphere. So I'm going to type that back in and select that. So this category here is called static mesh to update. So I can choose a specific static mesh that I want to basically update or override. And we're going to come back in here and type in a displacement power of five and do convert to static mesh again and you'll see all of those static meshes that are already in place are going to update dynamically based off of that a really really cool way to be able to do this and have static meshes uh, available to you right away without having to use the actual blueprint uh, and geometry script and a dynamic mesh at all times this is definitely much better for performance a quick little note here inside the displacer tool down under convert to static mesh. It's not visible at the moment, but it will be visible in your download when you download version 4.0 of the actual displacer tool. And that is a nanite option. So you will be able to just simply check a box there if you decide that you want it to be nanited right away as you convert to a static mesh, or you can leave it unchecked and convert it later with your own settings. So very quickly, I'm going to go over snow generation and we're going to hop into moss generation right after that because we never actually did a proper video on moss generation. And I just want to show you how that works. It's very similar to the snow generation. However, there are a few differences. So here in our snow, we're going to simply come over here. We have our static meshes. These are some meshes that we already have in place and also one of them, two of them are actually a displacer. So you can generate snow on top of a displacer or pretty much any static mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one here. This is a custom photo scanned asset that I did myself and brought it in. The material here has a snow layer type blend on top, which this is an option that you can also add in inside of your own assets if you wish. It's included inside of this project. So you can always copy and paste that material node into your material. However, I'm going to click on the snow gen above here and I'm going to scroll on up. And what we're going to do is make sure that we collapse these other categories again because we have a few different things in place under that default category. Um, the first one is calculate mesh height that we usually do. So we always calculate calculate the mesh height because that basically calculates this particular mesh that the snow is going to be falling on. If you're not familiar with the snow, make sure you check out one of the previous videos all about snow generation. So we did our calculate mesh height. I'm going to come up to our snow generator options and I'm going to open up all these sections there. And I'm going to go ahead and click on generate snow. This will take a few seconds here. This is a fairly high poly uh, mesh and it's going to be basically casting down snow on top of it and then blending that snow all together. So you can see we have a really cool actual clumped up uh, type of snow on top of this really, really cool effect. So um, 
this, what we can do now is we can scroll down. There's basically not a lot of new options here for the snow generation, except for the convert to static mesh options. So same thing here, you'll see there is enable nanite if we choose to. And we can also come in here and type in a name for the asset that we wish to do. So bear in mind, as you're making changes here, it's going to be recalculating this stuff. So if you feel like you're going to be making multiple changes on this before actually exporting, you could always just turn off the snow generation, make several changes, then turn it back on. So under asset name, we're just going to call it snowy rock. And we are going to scroll down here to that default category again. Once this updates, it's going to basically re-update the actual snowfall. And once it does that, we go to our default category and we're going to click on convert to static mesh. And same options as, as the displacer. If you keep that same name in there, it'll overwrite that. You can also select a different mesh to overwrite or give it a new name. So now that it's converted to a static mesh, you can see if we go to our actual folders here again, you can go under generated meshes and snow and you can see there is our snowy mesh. And just like the displacer tool here, if we hop back and we hide our uh, snowy rock static mesh, or let's say we move it out of the way, we can simply do that. We can click on our snow generation tool again. We can come back up to the top and instead of just pressing generate snow, we could change options here and then regenerate the snow and make changes. And then when we convert back to a static mesh, we can select that same one and have it update in dynamics real time basically again. So here we are on the moss generation map uh, overview map and uh, the moss generation works very similar to the snow. It actually still shoots down ray cast spheres from the sky and then clumps them together. But there are a few options that are slightly different than the snow. However, um, it works in very similar uh, fashion. So just like the snow tool here, we're not going to be using the actual uh, general section here or material section at the top. We're going to be using our moss generator category here and our subcategories. And just like the snow, you're going to want to scroll down towards the bottom here and collapse these other smaller categories below that and get to the actual default category here. So what we're going to want to do is make sure we calculate our mesh height. And first, what you need to do is under the actual meshes to add snow to, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you add that to that list. You use the eyedropper there, it's just simply drag and drop. I would usually recommend just doing one static mesh at a time. You can add multiples. If they were lower poly, this would happen. It would you know, work pretty well on higher poly models. models. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you only pick one there. Um, so let's scroll back down. Let's do our calculate mesh height. And basically what that does, it just calculates the actual mesh and its height and, and density and stuff. And then now what we can do is scroll back to the top and check on generate moss. And what that's gonna do is just like the snow one, it's gonna shoot down ray cast spheres. It's going to meld them all together. And we have some other cool little functions here that basically generate a displacement and makes it look like moss. So this does take a few seconds. So give it some time, just let it calculate and run through. This is processor intensive, not GPU. And so now you can see we have basically generated actual dynamic mesh moss on top of this tree trunk here, which is pretty cool. It's very good. It's nice and detailed. Um, there's actual displacement going on and so forth. This is a custom, custom uh, mesh shader that I put together just for this tool here. So it works pretty well. Um, under our actual settings here, if you scroll down under remesh, you can see we have a lot of the same options as our snow tool. Basically how much smoothing, the thickness, how many you want to um, you know, the detail level of it, your view V tiling and offset and so forth. And of course we have our static mesh options. So same thing, we can enable Nanite and we can type in a name for this particular option and save it out as a static mesh, which is a really, really great performant option instead of leaving it inside of the actual displacer or moss or snow blueprints. 
So there you have it. This is version four of the Displacer Snow and Moss Generation tool. Some really good, quick little updates, some quality of life improvements that make things just run a little bit easier and make it simpler for you guys to do. Um, I've also decreased some of the actual file size so that it's a little bit smaller to add into your projects. Um, I took away some of the textures that weren't needed and dropped a couple materials, but you still get a collection of good materials that you can use right out the box. You can always add your own mega scan stuff or any other other uh, materials that have a displacement texture map to them. I hope you enjoy this um, and take a quick look. Check out the marketplace links. I'll put those all down below. You can also check out createunreal.com. It has more information on the displacer tool, how it works. There's videos, information, photos, a whole bunch of good details about it. Um, if you have questions, I do have a Discord. It's Create Unreal. Um, you can always get on the Discord, ask me questions. I pretty much answer right away on those and I'm more than willing to help. Uh, if you are familiar with Displacer or the snow and moss, um, you'll notice that there was a few things in the past. Um, if your texture or your mesh was too high in the air on your Z axis, it wouldn't work. I increased the value. So basically anything up to like 100,000 on the Z axis should still work just fine now, which is a, a quality of life improvement. The materials have changed, just cleaned a lot of things up and being able to convert to a static mesh on the fly uh, right inside of it and still keep your displacer and all the settings and everything and not losing that when you actually convert it through modeling tools. So a lot, a lot of really good stuff here. And I hope you enjoy this, the displacer tool. I know there's new 5.4 nanite tessellation options and stuff like that, but it's not just the displacement tool of the snow and moss is really, really good for using in environments and custom assets and stuff like that. And it's super customizable and dynamic. Um, it works really, really well. It's probably one of my best tools that I've ever made and it, and it does really well. Make sure you check out the reviews. There's everybody pretty much speaks very highly of it. Um, any other information or questions, comments, please leave them down in the comments section down below and I will answer them for sure. Otherwise, hit me up on Discord and the actual Discord channel and we'll get through it. Thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate it for sticking around and until next time, peace out.